Everyone who lives here is apparently leaving. It's, or a huge number of them are. So it's just like a weird ragtag collection of our wandering parties just moving in for some reason. So it's to make this place feel like some kind of sort of weird Lovecraftian thing that draws people in. <clears throat> I think of that like that beachside town in Uzumaki that would just draw people into it like a like one of those like predator uh, like plants or crustaceans or whatever you call those like coral living creature things that are just basically just a mouth that's fused to a wall uh, just attracting things in and consuming and draining them and they can't escape no matter what direction they take they always find they always find their way back Clyde and Cass sat cross-legged in the shade of light aircraft Cass shuffling cards and Clyde absently flipping through a stack of unopened letters Demand for aerial stunts having faded almost completely, and many of their company having died or aged out of the profession, Clyde and Cass fo uh, found for their remaining pilots a steady flow of contracts work uh, delivering mail to remote rural areas, but this place was abandoned. Cass's cards predicted they'd be here for quite a while. Oh, the cat was in a box. It's natural habitat. They've moved a few more things in there. I'm not totally sure what's going to happen with these people. I'm kind of worried they'll stay here. Like they're going to be lured in by its quaintness and that's the true danger. She watched him. She stood in her own shadow. A few deer hunters and talkers walking past, but she said nothing to the seer. Didn't even look. She studied the path. This was the path the seer had found in her scrying game. A series of private dice rolls and inscrutable diagrams. The community trusted this game. It had led them to fish-filled streams, intimate knowledge of the elements of the stars. Even here, to the Sea Note settlement. They trusted it without understanding it, and now the game had revealed to the Seer this vital route, which would lead them to safety before the next flood came. At the end of the route, she'd seen a safe, quiet place, caverns of leathery black birds, a lake of eyeless fish, a towering flame. Now the diver walked the mounds, memorizing the route, he was almost ready. Is that what happened? The seer found that route, specifically the Echo, and Route Zero, digging this hole down. That's eerie. Just go diving in like that. Somebody seems to have like, turned on like a lawnmower or something over here, a generator. Oh, it was the plane, gotcha. That makes sense. But yeah, I get, a, I get a weird anglerfish vibe from this entire town. Except instead of a glowy orb at the end of the fish's head, it's a... the concept of quaintness. Yeah, I'll miss them for sure. Beautiful creatures, and so thoughtful. Oh, I didn't even see Junebug there at first. I bet. Where do you think you'll go?
Yeah, hard to say. Everybody's leaving, not that I blame them. That's the hardest thing about keeping an artistic community alive. Just getting people to show up. Whoa, look at this. Emily pulls a videotape out of the rubble. Oh. No, Emily pulls a, bro a, pro a broken projector out of the rubble. Emily's projector? Oh, uh, it's ruined. Poor Elmo. He'll be devastated. Nah, he'll be cool with it. Takes a lot to perturb that guy. Emily pulls a videotape out of the rubble. The label's all muddy. Oh, this is Rita's tape. I should get this to her. Maybe she can clean it up. Very little I can salvage here. It wouldn't mean anything anyway. It's kind of a package deal. You need the tapes, and the station, and the people. If one part is missing, the whole thing falls apart. Yep, no station and waning people, and really not really much for tapes, pretty much like if there's a, if this is a weakest link situation, it doesn't really matter which link, link broke, because they're all pretty shaky. Where are you flying to? Flying, huh. <laughs> I'm just checking to see if everything's working okay. You could fly her you could fly her somewhere if you wanted to, though, right? Of course. I don't love how dialogue's being handled right now. So why don't you? Here we go. Keep your distance now. Is he done? I'm not sure if he's gonna go much further. Whoa, they're all gone. That's weird. Yeah, I, I think this is a cool sequence and I like how they keep changing the format and so on. <clears throat> but I don't like the dialogue system. I miss, I miss the big block on the screen. Because right now it's on the bottom, like subtitles. And you have to manually click the subtitles to continue, and if you... If you, like, click slightly off, the cat runs around and leaves the conversation. You have to try to come back and restart it, and it's just like, ugh. It's, they, they gave you... they left you with complete control of the cat, instead of... having the cat, put, like, relinquish control whenever a conversation strikes up. Which leads to some... annoying controls moments that seem unnecessary. Oh, Wanda's awake. She was the one that was sleeping. Part 4. Subsection G. Notes on Inhabitants. Most have relocated already, prior to the transitional event.
Bureau of Reclaimed Spaces, right? I can spot you easy now. Huh. I'm making a survey of the site for potential reclamation. Initial results are promising. I think this may be the moment we finally reclaim this ghost town. So Wanda, who seemingly was staying here, was also a member of the Bureau of Reclaimed Spaces, planning on figuring out what to do with this place. So it really will be a t just eternal, it'll never go anywhere. I really like this knife. It has a aura, you know what I mean? An aura. Yeah, like it wasn't exactly used to cut apples. It's meant for greater things. Yes, ma'am. They found themselves a haunted knife. How's this guy doing over here? Wow! Seems to be working okay. Julian's gonna love this. Who? Yeah, it's amazing! Julian's still around. We briefly- I saw the shadow of the giant eagle go flying by. Something brown scurries up the side of the tree. A squirrel? Too fast to tell. There's just a second cat chilling around and we never interact with him. Alright, man, let's see what you've got. This one looks like I might still play. Oh, Bill Monroe, great. Yeah, we had a few of his. Man, this is a barnstormer. Popular? They used to be. Then the jukebox started to wear down. The longer it would run, the slower it would play. Then these weird echoes would start coming in. Like the music was leaking and just pulling out, pulling up in the button, in the bottom somewhere until everything was drowning. I don't know, that sounds pretty cool to me, man. What happened to the, uh, the boat? Shoeless guy, the hobo man with the penchant for pianos. Did he just not come up here? Is he, was he just sleeping on the boat somewhere? Eerie how the bird building sounds like it's full of laughter. What have we done? Oh! That's the memorial of the two horses. Uh. Yeah, there's the grave. Hey y'all, thanks for sticking around for this. I know we've all got places to... Well, if anyone still needs to go somewhere, be sure and speak up, okay? Or if anybody still needs somewhere to go, be sure to speak up, okay? I think Ron's heading through the woods tonight, back to the road, if you want to caravan. You staying, Em? Nah, I'm heading out too. We're gonna help James move the image processor to a safe place on the river somewhere. Did the station just get wiped out? I'm confused.
Everyone's acting like the station just got wiped out in the storm. The one... Hmm. Because people were talking about the WEVP as a station getting wiped out in a storm after being haunted by Weaver. I thought months or years ago. But then it seemingly happened after that conversation. Cause like those conversations were happening last night, and last night's when the storm happened and, and actually did that. Wiped out everything. Hmm. Maybe I lost the thread somewhere, or maybe there's some nonlinear time crazy going on. For right now though, we've got some friends to bury. The neighbors. Nikki has a poem, and I have a song. If anyone wants to say anything, though, um, I'll go first. The neighbors were kind, gentle, beautiful horses. I used to go on walks with the silver one out in the woods by... Why didn't anybody ever give them names? The silver one. Well, I guess he was gray, but his coat looked silver in the light. So I always called him that in my head. The other one's the other one, and I love those horses. You'd never know it, if you'd heard me talk about them like that. So I'm sorry, Silver One, and Other One. Sorry I didn't have better names for you. You deserved better names. Also sorry I'm so bad at this. Anybody else have anything to say? We didn't give them names because their names weren't ours to give. The horses were here before us, you know. They came from... They came with people from Central America. You know, the Utopians, the people of nothing. The people of nothing arrived on horseback in October, and their first experiment was to free the horses. That was generations ago, of people and horses. I don't know when we started calling them the neighbors. We should have called them people, I think. They were the only consistent residents of this place for over a hundred years. And now they're all gone. Who are the people now? Un pueblo de nada. I was thinking about when all those canned carrots showed up in the mail. You'll remember that. Somebody was calling around with some canned carrots they wanted to be rid of. I guess Consolidated Power got word of it. So these cans of carrots showed up in our mail. And we didn't know where they came from at first. I tried some out, no flavor to them. Some of them were gray, just awful. Rita said that's still, there's, that's still okay to eat. Like, sometimes carrots just lose their color if they sit in a can too long. But nobody wanted them, really. Well, Aunt Connie came on TV with a message like, Hope the horses are enjoying their treat. And we thought, okay, these are for the neighbors. Sure, horses love carrots, right? But the neighbors wouldn't touch them. Wouldn't even look at them. You'd think they were canned rocks. We opened a couple dozen and set them out by the water trough. And they, they were still there a day later. Even the raccoons steered clear. And then, of course, Consolidated sent us an invoice for every can we'd opened. Already made out in company scrip. How do you like that? Jesus Christ. The cans were like a trap. It's like the little fridge full of expensive treats in a, in a hotel. But they mailed them to them. And then they billed them afterwards, for even though they didn't ask for it. Consolidated is just the fucking worst. Okay. I guess we'd better move on. Nikki, you ready? Thanks for sticking around. Like Emily said, it's so good to have you all here like this. I think the neighbors would have liked this, all of us gathered here. They like to be around people. Maya, you and the other visitors might not know about the out-of-towner. He came here to work for the company to dig a ditch, and the company worked him good and hard, and for less than he was worth. But it wasn't enough. They had to use him up completely. 
And after that, we became ungovernable. First out of shame, then grief, then anger. I wanted to write this poem because the neighbors led me through that time. I used to sit with them, out in the woods. There's a clearing out there. It's about 20 minutes walk, directly away from the evening. Uh, directly away from everything. I mean, there's no reason to walk that direction unless you're going to this clearing. The neighbors like to graze there. There's a certain grass they like the best. It only grows in partial shade, deep in the woods. I'd go out to that clearing and just watch them, in my shame, grief, and anger. And they knew. Any of you who spent time with these horses will remember, they knew just what I was feeling. I could tell. It radiated off of them like sweat evaporating, creatures of pure compassion. And forgiveness. That kind of forgiveness Frost meant when he wrote something we somehow haven't to deserve. When I go, I want to be buried out there in that clearing and feed that grass they loved. Look for me under your boot soles, as the fella says. Nikki clears her throat and begins reading from the paper she's holding. We all leave town and call that town a ghost. What ghost gave this town breath? and made it home. And now that breath has gone, we buried it here. What's left is not a ghost, it's just the bones. Nikki's hands tremble a bit as she reads from the paper. Our neighbors were the best of us, of course. It's always so, our better selves, clear of ourselves where we can see their glory glow. They glow now, underground, our friends with love. Our neighbors left us here, though not alone. Where friends have gone, we hope one day to go. Here we lay our town and friends to rest. Some other cherished fools will build their home. Then we buried the horses. I've heard of a land of joy and peace and wonderful life. A beautiful place of mansions fair and skies so bright. Where all who believe the Savior dear forever shall stay. And having been saved by grace divine, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. I'm going that way. Yes, dear, the Savior I adore is with me each day. I'm clinging to him. Never to stray, just sing and praises all day long. I'm going that way, 
Well, glorious news I tell and sing as onward I go. For those who are still astray in sin, my Savior may know. I want them to sing that praise above some beautiful day. For glory to him who died for me, I'm going that way. I know I shall meet him at the gate when trials are past. I know I shall meet him face to face in glory at last. Oh, I Trust in the soul redeem in love, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. I'm going that way. Yes, dear, the Savior I adore is with me each day. To sing praises all day long, I'm going that way. Everyone's kind of taking their lead one by one. I still have new questions, like the two robots actually turned black and white, as if in mourning. And I just have questions about how they work now. They can just do that. I'm faster than everyone! Ha ha! Wait, is the house over here now? Was it always on the runway? Ah, oh, they made a kitchen. Well, there we go. Fuck! It wasn't a cliffhanger. That just is the end of Conway from our perspective. We never see him again. Ah. Well, that was Kentucky Route Zero. Always beautiful, always poignant, always compelling. Not always clear in what it was going for or what it was, what its point was if it had one. From moment to moment, the uh, everything involving the consolidated company 
is like very pointed and easy to and like is easy to tell what they're going for with a lot of it but uh other moments they're kind of leaving things up open to your own interpretations of what you think is going on in this case they don't really give you closure so you don't have the cleanest answers of what you think happens with Ezra or the robots or Shannon and so on uh, there's kind of non-committal suggestions that they may or may not leave or stay but you don't see the follow through you just gotta think about it I guess Anyway, I need to do some research and double check what to do about it, because, um, I've got to go unlock the final, final interlude, which is still crossed out, so i got to go double check on how to unlock that real quick, but this was the ending of the story, so I guess that makes that part an epilogue of sorts. I'll see you next time.